what do you get when you take a classic game from the early 80s and add a little spin to it capitalising on a popular trend of the time? You end up with Beyblade V-Force Ultimate Blade of Jam. Now Ultimate Blade of Jam released in late 2003 for the GBA in both North America and Europe, which in and of itself is bizarre as the series it was based upon concluded a year prior to its release. It was developed and published by Atari Interactive, which will explain the inspirations taken by this title in particular. But yeah, Japan never saw this one, which kind of makes sense as they received all sorts of exclusive Beyblade content from Battle Simulator as to full-fledged RPGs if you could believe it. As a Western fan, I kind of feel cheated looking back. Like, some of these games are actually incredible, and it's amazing to think that they never bothered to localise them for whatever reason. So, with all of that said, what does Ultimate Blade of Jam have to offer? Well, as soon as you get through the many splash screens, you can pretty much discern that this game was developed to cash in on the popularity of the series at the time, regardless of the quality, or lack thereof. When you eventually get through to the main menu, you're greeted with a number of options, as well as a poorly compressed version of the main theme from the anime that made me question whether or not my sound card was about to shit the bed. There's a multiplayer mode which I can't really show off as I don't have friends, however this mode consists of a battle mode and a race mode, nothing spectacular really. The Bay Workshop is where you can view all the parts you've collected throughout the main game and of course the story mode which is the main focus of today's video. True to its name, Ultimate Blade of Jam follows the story from the second season of the anime, but only up to episode 26 where the game suddenly ends for some reason. As you can probably tell from the low budget renders, the presentation for this game is absolute crap for even 2003 standards. Don't get me wrong, some characters such as Kenny or the Psychics look alright I guess, Although for the most part, the quality of these renders can range from slightly off to downright unsettling. Marion, what have they done to you? Each world has 7 stages in total with a boss fight once you've cleared all 7 rounds. To convey the story to the player, they give you a brief synopsis of what's taking place, while straight up quoting dialogue from the anime whenever the characters interact with each other. Again, there's not much to really say, this is incredibly low budget. But what's the point of this game exactly? Well, despite it being based off a series that centres around spinning tops, you sure as hell don't do a lot of battling. The game itself is remarkable remarkably similar to Marble Manners for the Atari 2600. You spawn in a map with an isotopic view, tasked with getting your marble, or this case your Beyblade from point A to B as fast as possible, all the while avoiding obstacles, traversing floating platforms, and defeating the opposing Beyblades along the way. You finish the level once your Beyblade has entered the checkerboard at the end of the stage before it stops spinning. Throughout the campaign you'll play as up to 4 Beyblades, that handle practically identical to each other. The blade is controlled via the D-pad which will become a lot harder to manoeuvre around the more stamina you lose. The A button will grant you a burst of speed that you can use to jump over some ramps, ram into other Beyblades to knock them off easier, and overall allowing you to beat the levels far quicker at the cost of some spin power. The B button is essentially your break, cutting all of your momentum at the drop of a hat which is basically a must, unless you enjoy careening off the edge every single time, which believe me, you'll be doing a lot of. By defeating other blades in your way, you'll gather bit piece energy represented by the gauge on the top left of the screen. You can also fill this up by doing a perfect launch at the start of the level, which is the far easier option if you actually plan on using this mechanic. Once the gauge is fully charged up though, you're capable of unleashing your special move by pressing the left shoulder button, essentially sending surrounding blades airborne, which can be pretty useful during the boss encounters, or to be used as crowd control when it comes to the later stages of the game. In every level there are a number of collectibles for you to grab. By picking up the orange and green batteries you can obtain parts and other goodies that you can check out via the Bay Workshop. You receive Grandpa? Wait. Bus driver? I can put the bus driver in my blade? No, if I could sum up my experience with this game, it would be awkward. Whilst your objective is rather straightforward, the manner in which your blade's control is far from ideal. I think it has something to do with your view of the stage. At no point are you able to rotate the camera so you can view it from a different perspective, which leads to a lot of bizarre moments when it comes to the controls. Take this stage for example in the third world. From the viewpoint they give you, it looks like you're supposed to hold down to progress, right? Well, no. If you hold down, Dronzo will move to the left instead until it falls off the platform. Platform. What you're actually supposed to do is hold both down and right on the d-pad and then you'll move in the direction you're supposed to go And this fundamental issue plagues the rest of what this game has to offer Especially as you progress to the later stages where the platforms become more perilous to traverse and are filled with other obstacles and gimmicks That can really trip you up if you aren't careful I found myself finding more success by just slowly edging my way through the level Avoiding the blades that were trying to knock me off the stage as when I did try to engage them in battle It often ended with me falling off the stage and having to replay the level all over again. This also Transcends to the boss fights as well. I use boss fights loosely.
Obviously, as really it's not entirely different from what the rest of the game expects from you. Rather than a traditional stadium, you face off against another blade along a chunk of map, with the goal of knocking them out of the stage before you run out of spin. I found these to be rather challenging, as due to the size of the map, it's incredibly easy to lose sight of them. If you are able to keep track of them, however, you may notice how difficult it actually is to knock them out. Now, there are a number of bottomless pits scattered throughout the stadium, but they're pretty small and I found myself falling into them constantly, whilst finding it near impossible whenever I try to knock them over the edge of the stadium itself. Also, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they spin indefinitely, which is a pretty big disadvantage even if there are panels in place that can restore your spin power. All in all, whilst this game is an interesting footnote in history, it leaves a lot to be desired. The concept itself isn't half bad in theory, but the execution renders what little joy there is to be had in this package to a tedious test of your patience. If you put enough time into it, you can definitely get over the learning curve pertaining to the controls. And in that sense, there is a surprising amount of content on offer for you to sink your teeth into. Around 50 stages in total, plus a race mode. If you somehow have a friend who has a fetish of wasting their time with obscure crap from the early 2000s. But if you're like the rest of society and actually have a life, I wouldn't even bother with this one. Even as far as the Beyblade series goes, there are far greater games, some of which exist on the same console, that will satisfy your needs of an engaging blading experience. Something Ultimate Blade of Jam simply can't compare compete with. Anyway, that's all from me, but before I go, I just wanted to give you guys a huge thank you for hitting our first milestone, 10 subscribers. I was hoping we could hit that before the end of the year, and you guys came out and made it happen. Thank you so much. And I apologise for the delay in uploads as of late. The consistent schedule will be returning as we enter the new year, with a long overdue review of Metal Fight Chapter 3, so I hope you look forward to that. Whether you celebrate it or not, I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. I sincerely hope you all have a great time this holiday season with your loved ones, and I'll see you again very soon. As always, take care and I'll catch you in the next one.